The groundbreaking Kunming Montreal Biodiversity Framework, reached last December, has been compared by many to the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change. It comes as biodiversity declines at the fastest rate since dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. 196 countries agreed to take action to reverse this trend, including protecting at least 30% of world's land and sea, sharing the benefits of using genetic information and global fund to support those actions. And I think this was um, a symbolic uh, example of multilateralism at work, that even when we are living in perhaps difficult geopolitical times, that the world can still come together through the United Nations to agree on tackling issues of common concern to humanity. In the past three years, the global economy has been confronted with multiple risks and challenges due to COVID-19 and the turbulence of geopolitical patterns. Many countries have shifted their focus to their own economic recovery and development. In particular, the willingness of developed donor countries to contribute is waning, which also affects the investment in ecological conservation in developing countries. COP15 is the first major global environmental event presided over by China. Amid the challenges, the country proved its presidency is hard to be replaced in reaching this global agreement. China had in, in, in recent years and uh, a number of initiatives that have demonstrated that it, it is possible for a country that's rapidly developing to also care about the environment. Also the work on recognizing the true value of biodiversity for the economy and for society is important. So China has done important work, for example, on green GDP, on this idea of global ecosystem product. President Xi Jinping, before he was president, of course, um, as provincial party secretary, he championed the idea of green mountains being uh, gold mountains and of, of lucid waters and the importance of this for uh, for for biodiversity and for people's uh, well-being. What Dr. Cooper mentioned is part of President Xi Jinping's vision of building ecological civilization, which is guiding a series of ecological protection practices in China. COP15 is the first global conference held by the United Nations on the theme of ecological civilization and the conference has achieved complete success. To build a community with a shared future for all life on Earth through ecological civilization is the banner held high by the conference, leading the direction of the whole conference. But for the global community, there is no time to celebrate this heartfelt victory. The next phase of hard work already beckons, mainstreaming the framework's architecture into national-level policies. These are global goals and targets. They're not legally binding. The first thing they need to do is to determine their na national targets towards these global goals. For instance, we have promoted the establishment of a nature reserve system with national parks as the foundation. We have created a system of ecological conservation red lines, which are areas with extremely important and sensitive ecological functions designated to be protected. This is unique worldwide. The land area drawn out by the red line exceeds 30% of the country's total land area. Over the next two years, China will continue to hold the COP15 presidency and demonstrate the same positive political will and actions that helped achieve the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. We will be fully committed to fulfilling our legal obligations as president, providing comprehensive guidance and support for the intercession meetings before COP16, and work tirelessly to coordinate all parties in implementing the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework to its fullest potential.